California. <laughs>
order to be successful in your intimate relationships. It's kind of complex, but I can guarantee that those of you who've been drinking since noon, those guys, even those guys are going to get it. Because even riding a buzz, every person in this room is smarter than just about everyone in the family. Y'all are so smart. does not rest on finding Mr. or Mrs. Wright. It's about being Mr. or Mrs. Wright. So that's what determines how happy and successful you are in your relationship. The degree. Okay. A lot of reaction. That's what determines it. So these are seven things I want you to be practicing in your life to grow yourself, evolve yourself, and prepare yourself for the love of a lifetime. It goes like this. Number one, date with integrity. Oh, I was going to set this up by saying, date with integrity. So this one, this one may not apply to everyone here. Some of you are already in committed relationships. Some of you are from families where your family is going to do the legwork for you and bring somebody into your life on your behalf. Some of you already maybe are having your first date. So for many of you guys, you may not have had your first date yet. You've been immersed in this sort of hookup culture, this we're exclusive, what are we doing? Are we to each other? No. And I'm like so chill about it. It's all good. I think it's awesome that as you graduate from college and move into your life post-college, you're probably going to start having dates. Sitting at a table across from somebody that you find attractive, who finds you attractive, is really, really good for you. It's going to help you understand more about what you want from a relationship, who you are as a person. It's going to improve your social skills and communication skills. It's going to reduce your anxiety. It's all very good. Now, in all likelihood, the way you're going to find that person to sit across the table from and get to know on a first date is from one of the gazillion apps out there, possibly Tinder. <laughs> Christian Gray, I am totally fine with you using online dating apps as long as you follow my four rules. You ready for them? Yeah. One, be safe. This means make sure someone in your life, someone in your life knows where you are, where you're going. Um, make sure that you meet up in public the first time you meet. This one may be pushing it too far. I'd like the date to last 90 minutes and involve two drinks and you're out of there. Here's why. If you Show up, have your two drinks, have your conversation. If there are fireworks and sparks galore, awesome. Go home and then meet up again the next day. First date of the first meeting. Um, second one, be honest with yourself and the other person. If you want an intimate relationship, don't say that you are okay with friends with benefits. Because you're not. Just be honest. If all, you, if all you want is friends with benefits, don't say you want an intimate relationship, right? Figure out what it is that you want inside yourself as best you can and be honest with yourself about it. Okay, three, use technology as a vehicle to get you from here to there. So um, this means I would like you to view your online dating app as a tool to get you from here to there. It's not a shopping service. It's not a game. I do worry about the impact of just this sort of mindless swiping of hotties and cuties and this one I love. friends with benefits situation is it's a real live human being. So keep that in mind and treat it treat it for what it is. Last thing is pace yourself. I'd like you to do no more than one first date a week. <laughs> what I hear What I hear from the 25, 26 year olds is there's a lot of burnout. So it may be a marathon on a sprint. So pace yourself probably one day a week. Follow one storyline through to the end before starting like five storylines all at once. Okay. Good? Good. Two, take charge of your happiness. You are in charge of your happiness. The most powerful way to be happy is to live
live in the moment that you're in right now. So there are some of us who fast forward and those of us experience anxiety. So the I'll be happy once. I'll be happy once I graduate. I'll be happy once I lose 10 pounds. I'll be happy once I'm in a relationship. That's that kind of fast forwarding anxiety. Others of us live in the past. We rewind. Those of us, are, those who do that are prone to depression, right? And sort of guilt, uh, feeling low. So working to live in the present moment leaves us feeling calm and open-hearted. So not arguing with reality, right? The reality is you're right here, right now, rather than wishing your life was here or wishing your life was there. One really easy way to put that idea into practice is to keep a gratitude journal. It's a notebook next to your bed before you go to sleep. You write down three things you're grateful for, and you're done. It literally rewires your brain to make you happier. Shh, I know it's hard. We're on two. We only have to go to seven. We can do this. Uh, makes you feel happier. The happier you are, the more you're going to be successful and ready to be in an intimate relationship. Okay, three. Own your shit. Own your shit. The cornerstone of a healthy, intimate relationship is self-awareness. So really learning how to value what goes on inside of you. The thoughts you have, the feelings you have, the family you come from, how you grew up, what you learn, how you learn, what you know and believe about love and intimate relationships. The degree to which you know yourself is the degree to which you can show up and be ready for an intimate relationship. Um, this also means, um, so there's nothing inside of any one of you in this room, any one of us in this room, that is so dangerous, so toxic, so picky, so shameful, that it can't be looked at. No one in this room is broken. We all have stuff, we all have shit, we all have neuroses, compulsions, issues from our families, traumas we've endured, but everyone is standing here today, which means that there's nobody who's broken and nobody who um, isn't worthy of loving and being loved. The only time we get into trouble is when we act as if it's not, we're not okay on the inside. We push our feelings down, we um, act as if we've got, got it together and we don't. What makes us really lovable is the degree to which we can be comfortable with our anxiety, our vulnerability, right? So under stress, we all become something. Under stress, I become irritable and controlling. So in the days leading up to this, perhaps I was a little... <laughs> don't want to, 
to leave you feeling icky afterwards. Sex ought to leave you feeling good afterwards. Good about yourself and good about the person that you're with. If that's not, if that's not the case, it's worth looking at why am I managing my sexual boundaries the way that I am. A third symptom would be having ideas and beliefs in your head that sex is yucky, disgusting, immoral, frightening, confusing, upsetting. It's really worth looking at why do I have those beliefs, where do they come from? Um, the last thing I will say about sex is, uh, oh, no, one more thing, two things. I was talking to a friend of mine who's um, maybe like two years post-college, and he was talking about what a relief it was for him to leave campus and enter the next chapter of his life, that he feels he is, in fact, in his sexual renaissance. <laughs> going sort of sexual interaction. He chooses experiences for himself, he feels good about who he is, he accepts who he is, and it's um, allowed him to have better sex, better sexual experiences than he did uh, when he was younger. So that is certainly the case. All the way to the fact that I can guarantee that the best sex of your life is going to come when you are in that intimate relationship, when you're in that long-term intimate relationship. Most of you are going to end up, um, even if you roll the ball down the field, you guys are getting married later than any generation before you, but in all likelihood, if we were standing here 10 years from now, probably every single one of you is going to be in a long-term relationship, most likely a marriage. And I can guarantee the sex that happens inside, if you do this work, the sex you have inside that marriage is going to be better than the sex you have any other place in your life. The sex that you have when you're in a safe relationship with somebody you trust, who trusts you, it makes sexual monogamy, rather than being um, sort of like something that limits you, it can be a, a place of um, freedom and expression and, um, and wholeness and goodness. Okay. such thing as a perfect relationship. There's no such thing as a relationship without conflict. There's going to be conflict. You have no control over whether or not there's conflict in your relationship. You do have control over how you handle that conflict. So knowing how to fight fair is essential. Things that are below the belt, shitty and cowardly include yelling and screaming, calling names, hitting of any kind, uh, blaming, shaming, Stonewalling, silent treatment, revenge, and ghosting. Right, ghosting is sort of disappearing all together. Those are not, I understand. We're all at risk of using some kind of like low end, below the belt sorts of behaviors when we're upset, but it's a really important practice to commit to learning how to fight fair. Fighting fair means being direct. Say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it in a mean way. It means being being direct also means not slamming the cupboard in the hopes that you're going to ask me what's wrong. I'm going to tell you nothing's wrong five times until you ask me a sixth time, then I'll tell you what's wrong. That's called passive aggressive. It's not great for a relationship. Much better to be direct. And when you're direct, using an I statement is like gold. So, when you watched Game of Thrones without me, I felt sad and angry. Not, what kind of an asshole watches Game of Thrones without me when you're sad that you would watch it with me? Right? That's not an opener to connection. So I say, okay. Number six. I want you to create a life for yourself where you can always, always keep in touch with what makes you feel passionate and alive within your own skin. So the happiest relationships are ones that are made up of two people who are committed to living with passion, who know what makes their hearts sing. And 
refuel each individual so they can come back to the relationship energized and ready to engage and be present. It's really important. A relationship is made up of two individual people. And finally, more being less doing. You guys are awesome at the doing. You know how to do. You've been on a hamster wheel since you were about five years old of perform, reward, perform, reward. You know smarts, whatever it is, you know how to perform and do well and be rewarded. Being in an intimate relationship requires something different than that. It requires less doing and more being. More being present, right? Not here, but here, present. Not comparing me to everybody else you could possibly be with, but being with me right here, right now, present. Showing up for your relationship with all of your complexity and being willing to see all the complexity in the other person, that kind of presence showing up for relationship. It's vitally important. It's captured in this, I love this quote by Maya Angelou. Like, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Right? And the way that you make somebody feel good is by being present. I'm here with you, taking in what you're saying, sharing myself with you as authentically as I can. That's the heart of an intimate relationship. So, in closing, I wish you all a ton of luck in your relationship and skill in your relationship. There is so much to learn from loving and being loved. There's humongous heartbreak and there's humongous, um, it's a crucible for learning and growth. Uh, so I wish you in your next chapter a lot of adventure and uh, a lot of success and hope.